Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Dentistified. Today's video is basically in continuation to my previous video which was part 1 of maxillary major connectors in which single posterior palatal bar and palatal strap were discussed in detail. Link for that video will be provided in the description box below in case you missed that video. You know, so many of you had requested me to make further videos on rest of the maxillary major connectors. So here is this video for all of you. So today we will be discussing about anterior posterior or double palatal bar, horseshoe shaped or U shaped major connector and closed horseshoe or anterior posterior strap. And the last major connector that is complete palate will be discussed in my next video which will be part 3 of maxillary major connectors. So if you are interested in gaining some quick information about these major connectors in a simplified manner then you must continue watching this video. So we'll start with anterior posterior or double palatal bar. So it has characteristics of both palatal bar major connector and palatal strap major connector. So it has these two bars anterior and posterior. Anterior bar is flat in cross section and is similar to palatal strap. This is positioned on the anterior palate such that it merges with the contours of palatal rugae. And the posterior bar it is half oval in cross section and it is similar to palatal bar. And it is positioned posteriorly, obviously, and also this is less bulky. So these anterior and posterior bars are joined by flat longitudinal elements on each side, as we can see here in this diagram. And hence, this produces a strong L-beam effect. Also, as we can see in this picture that the design of anterior posterior bar is such that although it is a rigid major connector, but it has minimal tissue coverage. That means it receives very little support from the heart palate. Therefore, its first indication is that it can be used in cases where the abutments are periodontally healthy and are capable of providing support. That means it can be used only when deriving support from the palate is not a major concern. Second indication is that it can be used when uh, anterior and posterior abutments are widely separated. Okay, And the third indication for double palatal bar is that it can be used in cases with large palatal tori. So this means that since the double palatal bar has minimal tissue coverage and it receives very little support from the palate, therefore support is basically derived from the abutments in this case. Hence, the abutments have to be periodontally healthy if we are planning to use double palatal bar as major connector in our treatment plan. Next, we will talk about the advantages of double palatal bar. The main advantage of uh, anterior posterior bar or double palatal bar is its rigidity. So generally, rigidity of a major connector is increased by having the metal in uh, you know both horizontal and vertical plane. Another advantage of anterior posterior bar is that it has less palatal coverage. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of anterior posterior bar. Now because it has uh, or it derives little support from bony palate, therefore it cannot be used when the abutments are periodontally compromised as I have explained it earlier or when the periodontal support of remaining teeth is poor, it cannot be used in those cases, right? And another disadvantage is that anterior posterior bar has multiple borders. Therefore, it often irritates the tongue action and hence it interferes with the phonetics, making it uncomfortable for some of the patients. So generally, anterior posterior bar is not considered to be uh, the first choice of maxillary major connectors and it is considered only when all other options for maxillary major connectors have been ruled out. So the next maxillary major connector which we are going to discuss is horseshoe or U-shaped major connector. So it is horseshoe in shape 
and its metal is extending over the lingual surfaces of teeth and then onto the palatal tissue for about 6 to 8 millimeters. So the advantages of horseshoe shaped major connector is that it can be used for replacement of multiple anterior teeth and it has minimal palatal coverage. Therefore, it can be used in patients with inoperable tori or in patients with prominent median suture. Next, we'll talk about its disadvantages. Now, the disadvantages of horseshoe shaped major connector are far more in number as compared to its advantages. Hence, it should never be used unless it is absolutely necessary. Now, since it lacks rigidity as compared to other designs of major connector, it allows lateral flexure under occlusal forces. That means it has a tendency to flex or to deform when occlusal load is applied. Therefore, it can damage the abutment teeth, right? And it can also result in impingement of the underlying tissues when they are subjected to occlusal load. Another disadvantage of a horseshoe shaped major connector is that it lacks cross arc stabilization. Hence, it cannot be used in distal extension cases. That means it cannot be used in class 1 and class 2 cases as it displays considerable amount of movement at the open end when the occlusal forces are applied. That means it lacks cross arc stabilization. So the next major connector that we are going to discuss is closed horseshoe or anterior posterior palatal strap. Now this provides maximum rigidity and minimum bulk. There are basically two palatal straps in this major connector. One is anterior strap and the other one is posterior strap. Now these both of these straps anterior and posterior they are connected by flat longitudinal elements on each side of uh, the palatal slope. So in closed horseshoe shaped major connector lateral flexure is almost non-existent. Reason for this is that the U-shaped connector in this is made rigid because of the added horizontal strap posteriorly as we can see here in this picture. So this rigid major connector is indicated for uh, distal extension cases or you can say for Kennedy's class 1 and class 2 cases. It is also indicated when multiple teeth need to be replaced. Okay, and uh, this can also be indicated when palatal torus is present. So this closed horseshoe shaped major connector can be used most in most of the maxillary partial denture designs. Now let's talk about the advantages of uh, anterior posterior palatal strap. It is rigid with less thickness. There is good palatal support and also there is strong L-beam effect. And the only disadvantage of this closed horseshoe shaped major connector is that it may interfere with the phonetics or speech for some patients. Now let's summarize the differences between anterior posterior bar and anterior posterior strap or the closed horseshoe shaped major connector. So in anterior posterior bar, the palatal connector elements are narrower anterior posteriorly. Okay, and in anterior posterior strap, the palatal connector elements are wider anterior posteriorly. Now, in anterior posterior bar, because of the narrowness of these palatal elements, the bars should have greater bulk. They have to be made bulky in order to ensure rigidity. Therefore, it is more uncomfortable for the patient. Why? Because of the added bulk. Whereas in anterior posterior strap, it is rigid with less thickness or we can say with less bulk as I've already explained earlier. Hence, it is comparatively comfortable for the patient. Why? Because of the less bulk. Now in anterior posterior bar, less surface area is contacted. Therefore, there is less distribution of stresses to the palatal tissues. Whereas in uh, anterior posterior strap, 
greater surface area is contacted. Therefore, it provides greater distribution of stresses to the palatal tissues. So yeah, that is it for today. I hope that now you have a clear idea about the maxillary major connectors that were discussed in today's lecture. With that, I'm wrapping up today's lecture and uh, we'll talk about the complete palate major connector in our uh, next video. So do like this video if you found it helpful and if you want me to make more such videos that consider subscribing to this channel. Press the notification bell which is next to the subscribe button so that you will get notified whenever I post a new video. Also don't forget to share it with your friends and colleagues and uh, you can drop your suggestions about the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. I will see you very soon in my next video. Till then take care.